Welcome back to Around the Table with Stacey Smith. We're talking about politics, and in about a year, the 2024 campaign season will begin in earnest. The Senate will once again be up for grabs, and a lot of attention is going to be paid to West Virginia and the Democratic senator from there, Joe Manchin. West Virginia has become a Republican state, a red state, and of course, the Republicans will be trying to unseat Manchin. To add to his problems, though, the Democrats are not always happy with him. So, Jim, if you were advising Manchin, not necessarily as a Democrat, but if you were advising Manchin, what would you tell him? Should he run again as a Democrat or perhaps switch parties or run as an independent? Well, let, let me follow up on some of the briefer remarks I made earlier today on the uh, on the 430 segment. I think that Mr. Manchin is in a very unique position here. Uh, and, and once again, he's the center of attention. Uh, both he needs the Democratic Party as much right now as the Democratic Party needs him. He had a little bit more of an advantage when he wasn't up for election to be more of a heavy hand going in with the president and others in his party and 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 with his leaders, uh, Mr. Schumer and others, uh, on some of the things we've seen in the last couple of years, which have garnered him national and international attention, and certainly a lot of attention in this in, in this program that we do together. Uh, now it's a there's a little bit more uh, at the table for Democratic leadership. Despite some of the things he's done, thinking that he will curry favor with the GOP in West Virginia, that is not going to happen. I'm certainly sure that they are going to pro they're going to have a candidate, and he'll be fighting in a general election. And at the end of the day, the things that he thought he was trying to do to curry favor won't make a bit of difference. He will need the Democratic Party, and and I'm sure others here will comment on what happens uh, when you switch parties. Uh, what happens to you if you do that? So I don't think that that is an option for him. I mean, I saw that here when Arlen Specter went from Republican to Democrat. I was county chairman uh, when he was running, uh, then he switched his party, and we saw how that ended for him. But but no, he will, however, be able to come in and negotiate with the with the DNC and with the Senate Democratic Campaign Committee uh, because there's things he wants because they need that seat. But at the same time, conversely, he needs them in the fall in order to keep that seat. So maybe there's some things they can come to common ground on so he won't be as much uh, of a maverick in his next six-year term. We all agree that that he is a key figure in American politics. I mean, he yields a tremendous amount of power in an <clears throat> almost equally divided Senate. But West Virginia is a red state, and he's been in politics since 1982 and with a very successful run. But in 2018, he narrowly uh, was defeated. He was almost defeated by, I think he won by two or three points over the Republican challenger. So there's a lot of conversations out there about, hey, is it time for him to make that switch and become a re Republican? Me, I would advise absolutely not. In my experience, when I look, look around the nation and here in Pennsylvania, when you switch parties, the party you join never trusts you. The party you leave never forgives you. As far as I'm concerned, he's a, he's a great example of an independent Democrat. He should give Republicans the votes they need when it's in the best interest of West Virginians, but he should remain a Democrat. I'm, I'm with Keith. You know, you, you lose you lose the faith of both parties uh, sometimes when you when you switch because they both know that they can't trust you uh, on some some level. So yeah, he's had a remarkable career. Yeah, is it a is it a red state? Yes, it is. Uh, has he kept winning? Has he been sort of a uh, you know, a, a remarkable politician in in uh, West Virginia, uh, West Virginia's history. Yes, he has. Is he an effective senator? I'd take him as one of our senators. I can tell you that because he knows how to play the political game and he knows how to bring home the bacon. He reminds me of a Jack Murtha at the senatorial yes. level. Yes. An another great public servant. It, it, Indeed. It's, it's interesting, too, because I believe Governor Justice is going to be the Republican nominee next year. He's in, indicated an interest in running for it. Um, he certainly has all the uh, wealth to run for that office completely by himself at this point. So it's going to be, could be a difficult time next year for uh, Senator Manchin. All the more reason you stick with the people who got you there than trying to jump ship and go into somebody else. They really I'm not sure why they want to be rid of Joe Manchin in West Virginia. I think he's done a great job for them. Well, you know, we, we call it a red state, but I suspect from talking to people, my law firm is down in West Virginia, that at national level issues in Congress and everything, yes, they are a red state. But you get into some of the counties, they're still pretty Democrat. Yes. 
They're registered Democrat. They vote for registered. Republican. Registered. Yeah. Absolutely. I drove through West Virginia coming back from the 2012 DNC. I had a car full of Obama swag, and uh, we got a flat tire. <laughs> And oh uh, we were in a very, very red part of the state. And, uh, yeah, there were a lot of novenas, but everybody was very hospitable when we got out of their own piece. <laughs> well, that's good to hear, especially for our friends in we West Virginia. on the main highway. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right. We'll take a break. We'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> 